Zelda from the very start. I got the heart, it's Mars to play the part. Down with Zelda. Creeping through with thin overhead view, cause a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. So, aside from this surprisingly catchy rap, what was special about the first handheld title, and how could it influence Zelda U? Note, it goes without saying that spoilers for Link's Awakening are in this video. Originally released in 1993 for the Game Boy, and later in 1999 for the Game Boy Color, Link's Awakening marks the first Zelda title in the series to be set in a land outside of Hyrule, in this case, the strange island of Kaholint, where Link has been left stranded after his ship was struck by lightning. He learns that to escape the island, he must wake the slumbering windfish using the eight instruments of the sirens. However, the big twist of this game is that the island of Kaholint never really existed and was all part of the windfish's dream. By waking it, he will destroy everything and everyone on the island, including his love interest, Marin. This game is one I didn't play during my childhood, so I've played it more recently than other titles, but this doesn't hinder my experience with it. While I still prefer other 2D games like A Link to the Past and The Minish Cap, I can truly appreciate the first handheld entry in the Zelda franchise and all the weird and wacky things it included. It's an amazing game that Zelda U must take inspiration from. It has so many odd things that haven't really returned in the Zelda series, and for some reason, tons of Mario characters and enemies, such as Goombas and a picture of Princess Peach. Weird. Still, some of the weird features are really cool, such as the flying... rooster? What? For Aonuma and his development team to create the ultimate and most complete Zelda, then the odd entries in the series such as The Incredible Link's Awakening must be looked at for the upcoming Wii U game to learn from, since it has these unique features that should return. Today, I list my top 5 picks for what Zelda U could learn from the Game Boy title. Number 5 Deeper decision making with long term repercussions I mean, yeah, Link's Awakening didn't really have deep decision making, but it did have thievery. In Link's Awakening, the bow is sold from the town tool shop for the ridiculous price of 980 rupees. Now, the player can choose to either grind for and pay the fee, or opt to simply sneak out of the shop while holding the bow. In fact, Link can steal any item from this shop by distracting the shopkeeper, or by use of the Pegasus boots. So this seems like a great deal, right? Free bow! Well, the theft has both short term and long term repercussions. In the short term, you get a Saki message from the game, and upon re-entering the shop, Link will be rewarded for his sticky fingers by a freaking insta-death Kamehameha to the face. Holy shit, that shopkeeper's packing heat. And in the long term, Link will be referred to as THIEF, in all caps too so you know it's serious. Even the windfish himself refers to you this way. This sort of decision making, i.e. to steal or not to steal, would be fantastic if implemented and expanded upon in Zelda U. For example, stealing items from a shop in a town could affect Link's relations with the population of that town entirely, making them less likely to aid him later on in his quest. It doesn't even have to be shoplifting. Seeing both short and long term consequences of Link's decision making in Zelda U would add some much needed depth to the game. Number 4 Useful Sidekicks While he doesn't appear in a huge part of the game, the great steel ball known as Bow Wow, no not the rapper, is a fantastic help. And yeah, he's a freaking chain chomp. Bow Wow can help Link out in a few ways. Not only does he absolutely destroy whatever enemy he touches, he can also devour the otherwise indestructible Goponga flowers and help discover secret seashells by pouncing around the spot where Link has to dig. Bow Wow can't be taken into dungeons however, reminiscent of Yoshi in Super Mario World. A powerful companion that actually feels helpful instead of a burden would make the sections of the game they feature in more enjoyable. I mean, I love Wind Waker, and Medley is a great character, but she's also ridiculously annoying at times. Come on, come on, come on, come on, fuck! Number 3 Guardian Acorns and Pieces of Power These are minor upgrades Link can receive from killing regular enemies. The Guardian Acorn reduces damage Link takes, 
and the pieces of power increase his damage output, adding a sweet knockback and explosion effect to his sword strikes. They also both cause the game to play really annoying music until Link is hit a couple of times. It's really annoying. So annoying. There generally isn't much reward for killing minor enemies in the Zelda series, but with the inclusion of little power-ups like the pieces of power on Guardian Acorns, they provide the player with a small reward and makes killing them seem like less of a grind. Even with the insanely irritating music, it's a nice surprise when killing basic enemies. Zelda U should learn from Link's Awakening by having a more extensive drop table on easy enemies, rather than simply hearts and rupees. Number 2 A big plot twist Link's Awakening was the first Zelda to truly include one. I mean, what did we have before? Oh no, Aghanim was Ganon, what a surprise. It's not like he constantly refers to Ganon throughout the entire game. The secret of Koholint in Link's Awakening is far better hidden and slowly reveals itself to the player throughout the game. At the Southern Face Shrine, before getting the sixth out of eight instruments, Link finds a stone tablet with the image of the Windfish and some text. To the Finder, the Isle of Koholint is but an illusion. Human, monster, sea, sky, a scene on the lid of a sleeper's eye. Awake the dreamer, and Koholint will vanish, much like a bubble on a needle. Cast away, you should know the truth. It's such a huge plot twist that gives such a massive amount of depth to an otherwise simple story that forces the player to question the morals of Link's quest. This leads us to our next pick... Number 1 A sad ending. Well, maybe not a sad ending, maybe a sort of not quite so fairy tale ending. While other later games in the series have had more thought-provoking and melancholy endings, such as the spoilers, destruction of Hyrule and King Daphnis in The Wind Waker, and the Hero of Time's lack of recognition for his bravery and feats in Ocarina of Time, Link's Awakening was the first to break the trend of very straightforward good beats bad endings of the Zelda series. Despite its whimsical side with some comic relief with characters like Taran and the Kirby-like enemy, it tells a very dark tale, with a realisation that completing Link's quest and waking the Windfish will cause Koholint and all its people, including Marin, to vanish. While I don't want Koopa Troopers stomping around Hyrule Field in Zelda U, a nice contrast between comical moments and sombre storytelling makes the overall plot more effective. I'm not saying I want a downright sad ending to Zelda U, but something that takes inspiration from Link's Awakening would give more meaning and power to the plot. An ending which has a powerful impact, and makes the player think, would be a nice break away from traditional happy endings. Thanks for watching this top 5. Stay tuned for next week, where I'm tackling what is arguably one of the most important entries in the series, Ocarina of Time. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.